The state of Ohio actually got its name from the Ohio River, which the Iroquois Indians called Ohio, meaning Great River. And I just can only imagine some old redneck white boy out there, and he said, did you say Ohio? And that's how it got its name. At least that's the way I pictured it in history. There is a great river that flows through Ohio. There's some great woods and crop fields and great deer hunting. But for some reason, we have had a really rocky past with Ohio. <laughs> What's Kip doing? I think he's lost it. Well, it's no secret if you've been following the show for any length of time that Ohio has not historically been that lucky of a state for us. 100% chance of severe thunderstorms. Our ability to get within 60 yards or less of a mature buck has been lost for the last five years. Up until the past few years, in fact, it's been downright unbearable for us to hunt there. It's negative nine degrees outside right now. This is cold as I've ever been. I ain't never missed a deer in my life on video, and I missed two this year. Two years ago, I killed my biggest eight pointer ever, so it made up for the bad luck in Ohio a little bit. Five years, five years. God, what a deer. That'll make us weeks and weeks and weeks that we hunted worth it. Just to see bucks like this is amazing to get to kill one. It's just really just a blessing, man. And then the following year, I killed a really nice, respectable eight pointer as well. Another good poking young eight. We've got some momentum going into our eighth season hunting Ohio. I would even say that we got a little bit of a hot streak going. Yeah, man, it's Halloween. The rut looks like it's kicking in Ohio. We're pretty excited to be here. Just like last year, we're staying with our amazing host, the Munn family. And my wife and kids are coming down for Halloween. And we got the Baker brothers and the Copenhaver brothers hunting in the woods of Ohio. So we ought to get at least some deer shot at. That is, if I can shake his stomach bug fast enough to get up in the tree stand. Chris was obviously hunting his farm before we got there, and the bucks were starting to get up on their feet, do a little bit of chasing. It was just about perfect when we were arriving. But Chris went ahead before we got there and kicked it off shooting an old nanny doe. Rut's gonna be kicking off here soon, and uh, for management purposes, uh, I always try to take out a few does, so. You know, the Munns and the Bakers have done an absolutely phenomenal job managing this piece of property. Mr. Munn plants corn and soybeans to harvest every year, and this year we actually sent out some antler king so they could plant it around the perimeter of their cornfields and different food plots so we would have a late season option. Deer crews all up and down here. We got an antler king food plot in between some rows of corn right here. This year, we pretty much got a big 11 that I had an encounter with last year. He was right there before I could get my nerve bow off the hanger. He just ran out in the field. A really super old eight point that the bakers and the Munns know pretty well. They found his sheds year after year. They've got tons of trail camera pictures of him. You know, I, I missed the deer last year, unfortunately. And as far as I know, he's still around. So I'm not really picky as long as he looks cool and I feel like shooting him at the time, that he's probably gonna get shot. Good evening. Well, the first day in the stand was Halloween day. And so we had to break out the hardy face paint and get in the spirit. And I'm not really sure if I was like an evil jack-o'-lantern, a uh, professional wrestler or a member of KISS. I don't know what I was really going for, but I look kind of terrifying. It's Halloween day. Josh and I got into Ohio late last night. This is the little spot we hunted last year at Halloween. And it's just absolutely ripped up all through the woods. Rubs, scrapes everywhere. Should be good, man. We're gonna sit tight and see if we can't smoke a buck. We've got a, a pretty cool setup right here. It's just a hardwood flat. It's pretty thick on either side. Good place for these bucks to cruise looking for does. Bunch of scrapes up and down the road, so. Probably 200 yards right behind me is where I killed my buck last year. In fact, do we have a clip? We have a clip of that? They're telling me we got a clip of it, so you guys uh, enjoy that real quick and look for some deer. You ready? Oh, God. Quarter and 
two. Little bit of a dangerous shot, but look, he's 20 yards. Pocket of his shoulder was wide open. I saw his heart like he was see-through, baby. We are tagged out in Ohio, and it's a good feeling. <sighs> Hashtag adrenaline coming out of my ears. Oh, hey, you guys are back. Yeah, we're still here. We didn't see anything, so uh, maybe check in with us later in the show. Usually toward the end is when we kill stuff, so maybe we'll see you then, or maybe we won't kill anything. The next morning, I woke up not feeling very well, to put it mildly. I didn't know if I had food poisoning or a stomach virus or something, but I found myself sitting in the outhouse for the majority of the day. Slipped into a spot where it hasn't been much hunting pressure this year, so we get to camp this morning and uh, kept sleeping in and feeling a little under the weather. So I took advantage of the opportunity, and Josh is filming me, and he's had two does run in on us. And we'll see where they end up. Oh, there's a buck behind him. So Kip, sorry man, but I gotta kill your buck. You know, there's nothing quite as bad as sitting on a toilet and your buddy's texting you pictures of deer broadside at the stand you were supposed to be hunting. Chris has all season to hunt these giant bucks. I got one week, so this is the kind of deer that I might have to tighten the old Hoyt string back on. He would have been dead if, uh, maybe on Friday, I don't know. Well, that evening I was still having some pretty bad issues and uh, there was no way I was gonna be able to get in a deer stand. And of course, like a good friend does, at lunchtime my good buddy Mike said he'd be glad to shoot that big deer on video. Stuck back into the stand that Chris and Josh was in this morning. Chris passed on a pretty good nine pointer, so we're hoping he comes back by. The, we looked at the footage back at the cabin earlier this morning and realized he actually was a shooter, so, at least in my book, so we're out here trying to seal the deal on him tonight in a really good spot, so a lot of good bucks in this area. So if he comes by or any other good buck, if everything goes right, we'll have one on the ground, so just stick with us. Hopefully we can get it done tonight. Now, old Mike is a big buck killer now. You might remember he killed that big 13-pointer that we were all chasing last season. He's one of the bigger deer we've seen on the farm and uh, was hoping to get a shot at him. I, I actually had him like two other times within 50 yards and just couldn't make it happen. And I know Kip and Josh was out here and they did the same thing, had him, couldn't, couldn't get him. So, man, I can't wait to text Kip and tell him what I did. Mike not only likes to shoot big bucks with his bow, but he also likes to make sure that all of us have clear shooting lanes. He's a, he's a member of the Timber Management Association. So every year, Mike has managed to shoot some sort of tree instead of the deer he was actually shooting at. In fact, last year, he shot two trees within 30 seconds of each other. Like if Mike was a UFC fighter, it would be like, now, welcoming to the stage, the sapling assassin, Mike, the lumberjack baker. The good news, for the sapling assassin is this place that we're hunting right now is completely wide open so when this big buck comes in he's gonna have plenty of room to shoot at him.
Mike is not playing around, ladies and gentlemen. He is stepping up his hatred for trees to even bigger trees this year. The problem is, I, if, he, if I would have stopped him and he would have took two steps, I couldn't have shot. It figures. I mean, like, he couldn't have done it any better than that. Gosh. The next couple days turned out to be picture perfect, gorgeous fall days in Ohio. Every day ain't my day. Easy street, don't run my way. Cross my heart and hope to spare. The getting's good, but tell me what do I get? Ohio day three. Um, we're actually sitting in an area this morning where uh, Kip killed his big eight last year. Of course, I'm saying this based on the footage that all the guys brought back because all I can see is the backside of an outhouse door and occasionally the floor and the ceiling when I'm praying to Jesus not to let me die of dysentery. <laughs> Still got the, what's it called, uh, bum gravy. In Cherokee, they would say that I had uso na yama hawini which loosely translates to a case of the evil water bug. Finally, one day, I felt well enough that I was going to sit in a tree stand for the evening hunt. Josh has been out filming Mike and Chris. Chris shot a doe, Mike shot a tree. That's what I heard. I don't even know, I'm just really trying not to poop my pants in the tree stand. Let's just be honest and say what I'm trying to do. That lasted all of 45 minutes. I was spending hours and hours in an outhouse, no electricity, in a cabin with no electricity quarantine from the rest of the herd. Well, we're heading down the driveway. I don't even know what day it is because I haven't been hunting in a while. I got some kind of stomach bug, so I've been sort of locked down in the cabin in quarantine. But we're heading to a little spot behind the pond. It's a food plot. And I'm really just looking forward to getting out there. The problem is, as you can probably tell by my face, that I'm, I don't have much energy. I hadn't eaten in like three days. <laughs> Well, it's like this, boys and girls. We have been pounded last night with a big thunderstorm and couldn't hunt this morning because it was storming on us. We're going out tonight. We're getting back in the thicket where I shot my buck last year. We've got two X stand climbers out there. It's the best place we've seen so far. You know, it's our best shot. It's our last night, so we got to get it done. I got a little bit of lucky, lucky bandana. I got a channel blackberry smoke. Rock and roll energy tonight. We're gonna do it tonight because it's gotta be tonight, so check in with y'all from the tree stand.
You know, I would love to tell you that I recovered fully from my sickness, went out, sat, killed the state record, and got all the things we hope from hunting. But I'd be lying. Chris, could you please just kill a deer to end this segment? We haven't given up and waved the white flag on the Buckeye State just yet. I'm still clinging to life and teetering on death's doorstep with one foot on a banana peel. We have still got one morning left before I have to go to Backwoods Outfitters in Illinois to see my good buddy Trey T. It's gonna get weird if a deer pops out and I'm holding this. Nothing like a peaceful day in the deer woods. Got a good feeling about this spot. It's gonna be awesome. Gibbs actually passed deer this week, which is totally out of character. You know, maybe they were uh, way too small, but uh oh, buck right here. And my buddy Mike gets on the big 11 that I had an encounter with last year. And then we've always got the Copenhaver brothers and they're hunting real hard in Ohio. So who knows what's gonna happen next week right here on Rams Red Arrow. You're pumped to be in Ohio, baby. So we can get do, get do. That's going in the outtakes. Dude, I've got this list too that I printed out of every conceivable diarrhea line. It's three pages long. <laughs> Case of the Collie Wobbles, the Hong Kong Dog, Bombay Bottom, the Boot Hill Two Step, Mexicali Revenge, the Stinky Sprints, the Gringo Gallop, Involuntary Tijuana Fire Sale because you know everything must go. Ring Burner. <laughs> I kind of like that one. 